Apostolic was born in 1912, January the 28th in Cody, Wyoming. Uh, shortly after he was born, within a couple of weeks, uh, he took a day, his dad had to move because his dad had problems uh, with the cold weather, and he went to California, National City, California, which is right off San Diego. And uh, so he started, a couple weeks old, he started a 5,000 5, uh, uh, mile journey, covered eight states, wound up in California. Dad didn't have what was, it, it was right before the Depression, his dad uh, Time for being bad as dad was a farmer. He didn't have work and they moved to uh, Phoenix, Arizona. He then came back to California, back to Phoenix, Arizona. He went to grade school in Phoenix, Arizona. And finally wound up moving again back to California and he went to high school at um, uh, Riverside, Riverside High School in Riverside, California. In around 19... Right, not, latter part of 1929, early 1930, uh, he was 19 years old. He moved to uh, come into New York. His brother Charles was already up in New York, and he was studying with um, uh, Thomas uh, Hart Benton. Uh, you go up our state capitol, you see Thomas Hart Benton's murals all through our state capitol and all the buildings up there. Anyway, you will, as the last time that I was up there in Psalms, that was in 1954. Uh, Jackson Pollock uh, spent about three months here in St. Louis as his travel as he traveled on up to uh, New York and got hit in the, here in the Depression and uh, stayed right down here in Hooverville. It was a tent city down here off of Broadway. He was down here for three months. He finally got out of St. Louis and got into New York. 1931, his brother Sandy came into New York. Brother Charles got him into uh, with the school with um, Thomas uh, Hart Benton, and he studied under Thomas Hart Benton. He also painted for the government. He got in the government work program. It was a WPA work program. So he really made his living during the, uh, the Depression era it, through the government, painting uh, pictures, murals, and such uh, for the government building. He really liked aluminum paint. He didn't have the products that are available today, like the materials that we have available today, but he did a lot with aluminum paint. He got a lot of depth out of aluminum. I use powders. This happens to be an iron powder in an acrylic. And that, that layer went on, and then I used a pneumonia, and I rusted it. So that's really rust. If you, if you felt this, you'll see that the rust really comes off in your fingers. It is, it is iron on rust. Picture over there, I have copper. That is copper powder in uh, an acrylic base with an acetone, and the copper will break it up. 1949, I saw the Life magazine, and I wanted to be an artist. Of course, I lived in a rural area, and in 49, that you, nobody becomes an artist. You, that, was, that wasn't anything you've heard of. My first art piece was uh, took it over to the St. Louis Artist Guild. It made the artist show out of about 800 entries, and uh, 70, 70 pieces picked and I got into that show. Anyway, talk about materials and stuff. So, what I try to do is I try to use different materials because I get different effects with it. I also try to lay the paint down like Jackson did in order to get depth. First of all, I only lay one coat down at a time and let it dry. Jackson didn't do that. He laid three, four, five coats down and the paints would intermingle. Uh, I do one coat at a time and it just, I just keep building it till I find it comes out and sometimes it'll set for a long time before I'll do anything else to it and then it just seems like it it finishes itself so I use this I use one of the things that Pollock used was a, was a he started with brushes and then he started with sticks I like the paint stick and I've cut the paint stick out so it's like an ink pen so I can take my my paint I can get a lot of paint in here and if I want to get the effect of that white on there, I can stand back and get down low. I can snap my wrist. And as I snap my wrist, the paint comes out of this, hits the canvas, flips, and spreads out. I can, and then if I want to put that, if I want to put it here or here or anywhere on the canvas, I can aim. If I want to put it, say, right here, I aim to pull my paint up there. So I shoot for that point, and I flip for that point up there, and it'll hit about right here. I also have a square bucket with a stick in it. Like on that painting over there, all those lines are parallel, like little, little thin parallel lines. 
I put it in there, put it down with the stick. When I pull it out, the paint's on both sides of the stick, but pulls it out of the pen. I can then come down, take the paint, and I can put it in wherever I want small, small parallel lines. I can do it also three or four. I have sticks with three and four cuts now. Uh, another thing that, that is controlling the paint, and what, I, what, what I can do is if I hold the stick this way, I can control the thickness of the line by, by turning it like so. Uh, I can also take it, clean out the center, hold it up high, and flip it. You know, put in a little bitty tiny dots where I want the little dots to hit. So the idea is to play off the paint and to play off the movement of the paint in order to get your depth and what you're trying to achieve. If you look over at this painting over here, uh, what black, white, white is both a particle, acts as a particle and a wave. Whatever pigment's in the black colors there absorbs all the color that's in a wave so we get a black back from it. The white doesn't absorb any, any of the waves so we, it looks white to us. In a red, all the color in, in, in the spectrum is, is absorbed except the red and the red comes back. So if, you, if you're trying to play with white, so when I look at this, I'm trying to, trying to achieve a, a, a depth, and I try to look at how the paint works in, in, the, in the terms of light. And the reason I, I, I paint down like this, and then I put them up and I look at them, and it tells me what I'm trying to, trying to achieve and what I'm trying to, trying to do, and then I come back and paint again. Because when I see the light hits that, I'm looking how the light hits that painting. Uh, I want to see, see what that's done. I want to see the depth that I'm trying to get with that painting. Jackson always painted roll canvas on the ground. He never, he painted on a roll canvas. That looked like a roll canvas. The edge is roll canvas on this brown one here, but that's not a roll canvas. That actually has a sealer on it. Uh, a lot of Jackson's paintings today are being restored because the paint and stuff is coming off the canvases because he didn't seal his canvases. Uh, not that he didn't know about it, not that he didn't know that the canvases needed, needed to be sealed, he just didn't do it because he couldn't afford it, he was very poor. Anyway, he would paint on the floor raw canvases. And the reason he did is that his canvases were so big he couldn't, couldn't ship them. So he'd fold the canvases up and he would send it, if he was gonna take it to a, to a show, he'd take, bring in folded canvases and he'd be able to stretch it right there and stretch the canvas right there on the floor and then put them up on the walls. So I'll kind of... careful here so I don't get this out on the carpet or on anybody. Yeah. Now after I do this for a while I can tell been doing this and I can tell how my paint's going to react with certain things and it just sort of becomes like, I mean, that's what I do, I paint. It, it didn't work like when I first started, I really practiced, I really practiced. If I bring the stick back this way, I can put a dot on there and then bring a line out of the dots like that. It gives me movement in another direction. Now, I'm going to put three colors on here today. I'll probably take it back to the studio. 
may add more color to it. I don't know what I'll do, but I'll let it set dry, put it up on a wall, and I'll look at it. i probably add some more orange to it, maybe a little burgundy. Something else that a lot of people don't know about pollock. This is this is has not been verified in any in any way, but it is it is the it is the belief by several people that pollock suffered from what was called optic migraines. If we get a migraine headache, which we're very painful, an optic migraine uh, is of the optic nerves. And what it does to the brain is that if you look at something figuratively around the room. All you see is lines. All you see is broken up lines like this. It doesn't put it doesn't put anything together. So a lot of times Jackson would be pain in the air and they believe that he was having an optic migraines and letting the pain fall, and he'd be painting the lines that he saw out in the air like such. And so uh, that's uh, uh, then he talked about it as a kid, so forth and so on, and that he experienced these strange, strange uh, views. And strange uh, sights, which would, would account for the uh, optic migraines. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to look for composition and balance. Since I've got this heavy line right here, which is off center, which is good, uh, I'm trying to trying to start in that and balance the rest of it with that with that with this this line that works here. And, and I, I don't want to overload. I want to kind of keep that kind of balances it through here and. Uh, Now that, by, by knocking the paint out like this, I'm getting real fine, thin black lines on there. You can't see them from where you're at, but if you, when, when you get up close to it or stand back and look at them, you'll see these little thin lines in there. I get a lot of heavy paint on there by loading my, my stick up a little bit more. Um, I found that I have more control. I can also take a, a bourbon bottle with a pour out, this doesn't stop pouring, and you can pour, but I get too much paint, I don't get enough, enough control to what I want to do. I had a couple today that came in and looked at this. He said, I don't understand that. And I said, that's because you don't understand me. You don't know me, therefore you can't understand me. I mean, so what that is, is that's my feelings of what's taking place at the time. What's going on here is taking place at this time. That's my feelings. It's, it's what I'm looking and it's what I'm feeling. The, the idea is, once a, once a painter or any artist starts to become known and people know of him, then they start to understand his art because they understand him. Toward the end of Pollock's career, he had a pretty good run. He had a run through his, uh, his figurative period into his drippings. 
or his what they call the critical action action abstract. And then there were other orders starting to come up. Uh, Pollock was on to some new ideas, was trying some new stuff when he died. Worked a lot with black and white only uh, toward the end. He, some of his stuff was not considered by the, by the com art community, by the critics anymore, as being on target. There were new people coming up with new ideas and uh, now this, this stick here got a kind of a curve and got a, a big hole right in here which allows me to do a little bit different things with the paint. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some white on here. Now this is where i got to be careful because I can't get it outside of, can't get it outside of the, the thing here. I don't want to get it on anybody. a lot of white because it allows me to come back after she dries and add other colors and I don't lose my, my white background. Sometimes I use white and I throw more black over the top of it or another, another. It's how I feel. You see, it's like uh, what I start to see out of it. Okay, I think I'm going to stop on that. That's a pretty good start. I don't know what else to do with it right now. Uh, that's my story in Jackson Pollock. Yeah. Yeah. Guest book over here on the table. Uh, if you want to sign the guest book and put your email on there, keep you up to date. Uh, all the work that I do.